thanks for coming by the way thanks for having the, the option of doing this webinar it's uh, it's been some time like connecting this content together it's just a start i hope to actually develop this further mm. it's basically a speed run uh, through all the different options which uh, are provided by the basically free or pretty cheap options out there which are now available and yeah so the i will be focusing on gpt4 mainly like some of these things which will come up the ideas the plugins uh will be possible to be done with gpt3 but because of the big difference in quality between these models then uh, basically i will skip that because gpt3 mm, is very significantly worse right so one thing you have to also take into mind is uh when we, mm, this this whole idea, this whole board I created is a start of what I hope to be a monthly newsletter. Because all of these ideas, which these are just my opinions, I'm sure there are better versions of them. Also, I don't really know all the use cases. So there's no possibility of me actually creating a big library of, let's say, mm, tools. But if we actually collaborate and uh, focus on, you know, connecting all the different views we have within the company, I believe we can uh, create a library of basically quick win solutions. Yeah, so that will be the newsletter. I will be pushing most of these ideas to the center of excellence uh, soon after like the webinar. And so I hope to make it easy access for you guys. Also, I will share this board. So anything which comes up here, you can look up today, tomorrow, one week from now, right? So. Yeah, so before I start, the yeah, there's a few things I really want to mention. One thing is everything here is my opinion. Mm, there's no private data. Most of the data used for this webinar is just taken from the internet, uh, online basically. And yeah, so to start off, let's, let's start with security because that's a really big thing uh, which you have to take into consideration on every step of the GPT solutions, right? So first of all, there is no legal framework right now for these solutions. They are all basically new tech, uh, whereas the law uh, regulatory bodies are known to, like it takes them some time to actually adapt to the tech scene. And the tech scene is moving so fast that like, it's hard to expect, hard, hard to predict where this will go. So for example, we can be creating solutions now, which may be actually illegal next year, right? Because there's really no, real answers when it comes to like the intellectual property used for developing these models or how do we actually validate them. So that's one thing you have to take into mind. Another thing is this is not the golden source of truth. This, these, uh, this is LLM is a tool. It's not really AI. We call it AI because AI is basically everything which is smart right now, but it's not. It's a very sophisticated algorithm, but it does make lots of mistakes. It hallucinates, uh, it, it, it depends on the data, which the data quite often may not be uh, very high quality. And also it's very, very like, uh, let's say self-focused. So it, it, doesn't even, it doesn't really know if the answer he's giving you or not is good or not. So even if he doesn't have like the materials he needs to actually give an answer to your question or solve your problem and do the task, he will still do it. And he will be 100% sure that that's, you know, that's, that's the way to go. So in the end, everything it does has to be verified, has to be checked. So this is no way replacing uh, anyone. It's, it's enhancing us, but it's just, it really depends on how well we use it. So then there's the third point, which is data security. This is something uh, that many opinions are about in general. But in farm, I think we can all agree that our security is one of the most important points. So we cannot allow for confidential data to be going out to, I don't know, American, Chinese, or whatever other companies are out there, right? Because like, we can really uh, give guarantee of what we do, right? But the moment we actually start sharing data externally, mm, yeah, you can, like for example, OpenAI does, actually guarantee let's say that they will not train using your data but at the same time your data is still going there so it's really a question of how much you trust them so yeah so if 
as a rule, I would say if you are unsure if the data is confidential or not, do not upload it. Uh, only if you are 100% sure that data can be used externally, only then use it. In other cases, there are methods to go around. I would say purge the data of any ID or like contextual property, stuff like that. You can do that, but if you are not sure, step back, think about what you're doing and come back later. There's a Q&A board here, also a, a board for the newsletter ideas and what I want to um, build up on, which is for sure content creation, which Asmi may be interested on or HR. Basically, these tools can be used in many different sectors of the company. So with time, I hope to build up a, a big like tree with many branches going out for all the possible solutions. Yeah, okay, so there's one more thing I want to mention. All like there's one metric which is very important to take into mind when using these models, and that's the tokens limit. The tokens are basically the memory of the model. So, for example, ChatGPT4 uh, has 8,000 tokens limit. That is plus minus, let's say, 10 PDF pages. So, the moment you go above that, uh, when it comes to like the amount of text you drop into him, both as context and as your query, then he basically starts forgetting what was in the beginning. It's not exactly a first in, first out system, but he will start going off track. So basically, as a rule, the less the better. If you can uh, try to use one or two or three PDF pages with for your query, or, because the, the quality will go significantly up, right? So yeah, uh, Nodivision also is developing their own, uh, or we hope to develop our own models, but that's down the line and we will be most probably using open source models, but that's a topic for another webinar and I will not be going in deep into that. Okay, so let's go to the first part of the actual content, not just uh, me talking about risks and the security and stuff like that. So for GPT-4, if you actually, um, purchase it, you will be able to access uh, some of the features which I'll be talking about here. And those are most importantly the plugins and the data analysis tool. So to activate them, uh, the videos are also included in the board. Basically, you go into the options of GPT and... Okay. Oh, sorry, I have some network problems. Okay, let's just refresh that. So basically what you do is you go into the options of GPT-4 and there you have a slide bar uh, for beta features. One of them is used for the, for the Mm, plugins and one of them is used for the data analysis but yeah I don't think I'll be able to show that right now so what I would do is I would just do it myself uh, okay So this is the same video. Mm, basically, you go into the options down here, and this is the plugins and advanced data analysis. You activate them both, and then if you look up here, you will see that the, mm, the both of the op options are available. So that's how you access it. Uh, the plugins are like a store, like a Google store, Microsoft Store, basically you search for the plugins you want and yeah, you have a list of them. So these are going all the way from how to, I don't know, access Excel better, use Excel, maybe automate slide making, PDF reviews. You can look for yourself and there's lots of tools there. So the ones I use and I will focus on during this uh, presentation are, uh, one of them is the YouTube summaries. So YouTube still consists as one of the main sources of information. It's not the best, but it's still one of the main. And 
basically the content creators quite often are paid depending on the length of a video so that's something um, you can just cut down on if you don't want to listen to all the like jokes and side topics of the video and just want the content you can use a tool called the video captions that's a plugin which uh, you just um, once you start using the plugin basically you just attach the address of the youtube video and it will suck up all of the transcription and then create like a summary as you can see in this case so instead of actually watching the whole video you have the whole content this takes more or less uh i don't know like one minute and here you are like the 20 tips on how to use microsoft excel right so then you can actually build up on that so you can actually ask ChatGPT to elaborate on this like if some of these are interesting for you, you can just ask him like which of these may prove valuable for you to, I don't know, build a planning in Excel, right? And he will actually answer you and give you some additional tips. So you're actually getting more content than the video itself possibly could. So yeah, so that's one use case. I think you can save up to half an hour daily just using this. It really depends how much you watch YouTube, how much you um, listen, watch guides. There will be also references to other um, video sources, but for YouTube, that's that. There's also 85 Chrome extension. And yeah, you can check on that. So the next plugin I want to talk about is the web page summary. Because if some of you know, the um, content for GPT-4 and 3 has been uh, locked at more or less two years ago so anything which has happened during that time until now will not be actually included in the training data for gpt4 there are some exclusions to that rule so um, for example microsoft may drop their own content in there but in general most of the data is not there so what you can do is you can just use the web page summary plugin and with that you can basically question and summarize any web page which is out there so the, the example I've been doing here is for the ISP, which was a few weeks ago. Uh, actually, I, this is something I did. Yeah, the videos will just not work. Uh, sorry for this. Uh, I guess I will just have to access them here. So basically, the conference was very nice. There was a very nice lineup of the conference, right? Uh, but something I like, and I think many people out there also like, is to like create their own Excel summary or notes, you know, just review what's there. So that when, then when you are in the heat of, you know, the conference, you don't actually have to open up the web page. So what you can do, and what I did in this example, is I just copied the links of the free web pages. Mm. Actually, do you guys see what I'm showing? You don't, right? Okay. Mm. Sorry, just... Uh, Dominique, I... can you try hey, yeah. to click on the I thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. I just realized Sorry, that... Sorry, we uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, because I've been... We link. Yeah. It works. Yeah, 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 because you are part of the board. I don't know why it's not working for me. Okay, just a second. I'll try to refresh it again. Okay, I will just... Oh, hey, it started working. Oh, Great. <laughs> okay, uh, so... Yeah, so in this example... I took the, the free websites of the ISP, I dropped them into ChatGPT and I asked ChatGPT to basically summarize uh, the, the schedule for that day. So you can see here, I asked them first for the first day and for a second day, for a third day, right? And I have a nice summary of all three. I can go a step further and ask him to connect the three summaries into one. I could ask him to push that to like an Excel format and then they can just copy paste it to to basically any planning uh, tool I'm using. So yeah, so that's how you can use it on live websites. You can also uh, find like a blog post, an article, maybe 
uh, LinkedIn, comment, whatever you want, and you just post the URL. As long as it's publicly available, the plugin will suck it up and it will actually create, like summarize the content for you. So you don't actually have to uh, do it manually. There's a bonus here where you can actually use the mermaid chart or the whimsical diagrams uh, to create charts. So you can mm, create some of these charts. They are not the best, but they are basically automatic. So you don't actually have to do them yourself. And then you can basically mm, do a nice summary with a graphical way. So that's how you basically Q&A or review um, live websites. As also an example uh, I included, which is basically connected to um, mail or more on the HR side. So this is something many people are doing out there. So it's worth for you guys to know that uh, both from the HR side and from the, um, like job search site, people are basically connecting the um, the job uh, offer with like their resume or whatever description they have of themselves. And you will actually get a very clear distinction of what uh, what key words could be used, like what uh, are you actually a fit of a role or not, you know. So this is this is an example which I know is used a lot within an industry. So uh, HR will do it to check if you actually fill the requirements and yeah, people do it to write cover letters or whatever they want. So yeah, so this is this is also a very interesting use case. You can look into it. Yeah, I'll fast forward because I have a bit too much content. Okay, so the next example is Fireflies. Actually, Fireflies is used for this webinar. If you check the list of people in the webinar, you will see that Fred is there. So Fred is not a person. Fred is an AI, which I invited to this meeting. And what he does is he listens to everything a say or actually you also i should have said that at the beginning maybe and he will do a transcription out of that and also a summary of the meeting so the way that works um, is basically we create a account in fireflies and we connect it to our teams account so here you can see this is my account uh, you can also see that uh, pierre is within our my let's say friend list and basically this is how you connected to your meeting you he will actually like if you connect it to your microsoft teams it will see your future meetings and basically you just click the slide bar and he will join the meeting automatically so then after the meeting he will create this pretty neat summaries so this is a meeting i had a few days ago with one of the lms solution providers and yeah, this was lots of technical information there. Not everything actually I knew the answers on the spot, right? So here I have a full transcription of the whole meeting and I can work with this, right? So mm, you can use this in many ways. And there's also some extra information. So like who has been speaking the most? What was the, let's say, positivity of the meeting? You know, maybe you guys are fighting or something. It will still come up, you know. Uh, and then, like, basically, you have also the whole transcription. So the transcription, once you have it, you can actually mm, go forward, right? And you can just post the transcription to ChatGPT. You know, you can challenge Fireflies and try to create a better summary. So uh, what you do is you, you copy the, mm, the meeting summary, go to ChatGPT, post the meeting summary, and just ask him to maybe create a new summary or maybe answer a specific question. Like, for example, you can give him a list of bullet points he wanted answers for, right? And he'll take those bullet points and answer them from there. So in this case, I asked him for pros and cons of this solution, and he, yeah, he started writing them down. And this is based on what we talked about. It's not... He will maybe add a bit of his own knowledge, but Generally, this is based on the, on the meeting. So this is a great way to summarize the meeting, maybe you know, push forward the summary to your stakeholders. Mm, just remember, same as with all the other AI tools, uh, confidentiality is something you should have in mind. So if you're talking about mm, very confidential information, then maybe it's not a good idea, just, just saying. Okay, so then the next idea, I'm gonna um, 
showcase to you guys is the video file transcript summary. So this is something uh, I actually was working on last week. It's a method where you can take any video, not just a YouTube video, but any video and create a summary of it. So basically, once you have the video file, uh, you will upload that video or audio file to Google Transcriptions. Google is actually quite good at this. Also, there's a pretty big amount of free transcription you can have in, the, let's say, the demo or freemium version. So you can just drop it in there. Mm, it will process for half an hour, an hour, depending on you know how mm, how big it is. And yeah, in this case, I actually used a no deviation video from YouTube. So this is one hour, 14 minutes about CKV. Hi, everyone. Uh, maybe some of you guys remember this. Uh, June was part of this meeting. And yeah, so this is some good content, right? Uh, but it's quite long. Uh, or maybe I've already watched it. I just want to make a summary of it. So I extracted the audio from this content. Uh, I recommend using VOC Media Player, but in my case, I just used online tools since this is available online anyway. This is not private data, right? So you upload that to the Google. As you can see, he will, um, I think one hour, 40 minutes of uh, YouTube video took him more or less half an hour to do a transcription. And yeah, here we have, this is the transcription. So there will be mistakes here. Um, but the, one of the good things about GPT is it doesn't really care about the quality of language. He will try to find the medium, you know. So like if 10% or even 20% of this is blubberish, like he doesn't care. He will still be able to process it. So that's what we do. We take this text file and we drop it into uh, GPT and ask him for a summary. So let's see how that went. Yeah, this is an alpha prompt. I'll be talking about this in a sec. That's actually the next topic. So this, these are the two summaries I created. So basically, this is the whole text file of the transcript, and it's cut into two pieces to make ChatGP to, to make it easier for ChatGP to operate on this. I'm also using, in this case, the advanced data analysis tool, which I will also mention later on. It allows you to actually attach uh, files without extra plugins. So I basically attach the part one of the transcription and the part two. And I tell him that, you know, part one is 50%, part two is 50%. This is one big webinar and I want to make a summary or in this case, I think I'm asking him to make a blog post. So if I asked him to do both at the same time, he, the quality would go significantly down. I could actually cut this into four pieces and the quality would go up. This is really up to you. I did it like this just to showcase as fast as possible, you know, uh, the possibilities here. So yeah, I tell him to write a blog. I tell him that basically this is the first part and yeah, he goes on about it. I fast forward and there you are. You have commission, qualification, verification, CKV in the pharmaceutical industry, right? So these are the insights from the webinar part one. And here you have uh, pretty much the content of that whole YouTube video. Yes, yeah, so you can do with this what you want. You can use it for your own notes. You can post it as a blog. Mm. This method will work for any video file. The only thing is for Google transcription, I think you have to convert the video file to audio file. But that's, as I say, you can download VLC Media Player, which I believe is free and do that locally. So yeah, so that's that. And then we will go to the next part which has popped up already, and that's alpha prompts. So alpha prompts is not a plugin. It's more like an uh, a calibration method. So basically, the GPT LLM models, they are, mm, you could say very artistic in a certain way, but it's in general, they will mm, have this uh, method of going all directions, right? So when you ask him one thing, you don't really know exactly which direction he'll go. So the more concise information you tell him about exactly what you want, the higher the quality will be. So basically it's like the, the uh, I don't know the English word, the board for the horse, right? So the horse looks directly in front and it's not distracted by anything on the side. So this is what 
what alpha prompts are all about. So basically you create a template which you copy paste to GPT every time you start the discussion. And this template is supposed to calibrate his response. So if you want to talk about something technical and it's a closed field, right? If you tell him that, he will actually focus on that and not go all the way around. And this will increase the quality of the output significantly. And also there are other things to mention. So if you look, this is my alpha prompt. This is um, something you guys can copy. It's a generic one, so it's not necessarily focused on one job. Uh, but what you will see here is like these calibration methods, right? So first of all, I will tell him something about me. I will tell him I have a high IQ. This is not because I am self-focused and I love myself. This is more because GPT, for some reason or other, like if you tell him you have a high IQ, he will actually respect you more. And that's just how it is. There's there's a whole probably long elaboration why, but yeah, so you will try to tell him these kinds of information so he keeps focused, right? So you don't like him telling you that he's an AI, for example, right? Like no one likes that. We know he's an AI, right? We don't want all uh, moral disclaimers mm, because we've all seen them already, right? Uh, what we do like is we like like scholarly papers, we like facts, we like quotations, we like you know to verify that this is really working. So this, this is what this is about. So the first part is about what a very very generic overview of who you are and like what kind of answers you want from the GPT. So then you go to the second part and this part is more customizable. You can do with what you want and this is like mm, one take on it. So basically it will uh, format the answer. So basically you are telling him, telling him to pretend to be an expert and yeah, if you tell GPT to pretend to be an expert, he will actually get smarter. So that's that's how that works. And he will actually tell you what expert he is, what's his objective, his assumptions, right? And then he will give you his response. So this is one version you can do about this, right? So then, like, if you look at how this works, I basically have this prompt ready whenever I want, right? I just copy the prompt. Uh, yeah, this is actually, yeah, this is a prompt for this webinar. So I actually added some information so he knows I'm doing a webinar about GPT within Pharma. Yeah, so you see, he already knows I am doing a presentation on GPT and Pharma, right? He also knows the basics of the previous part of the alpha prompt. So now when I ask him something, the answer will actually be a lot more concise and on point. And yeah, it will actually be smarter. Okay, so I asked him to give me a detailed instruction on how to display a part of the webinar, right? So you can see here, he's telling me that he's a presentation designer and content strategist, right? His, he does his objective, his assumptions, and then he starts giving me the answer. So in the end, you can get the same without the alpha prompt, but if you play around, you will see that the quality actually goes significantly up and you can save time by pre-calibrating it. So if you have a task for, let's say, the next half a year, you are doing, I don't know, something simple like translations, right? Uh, you can create an alpha prompt, which you will be using most of the days throughout the next half a year. So this over time can really increase your productivity and reduce the time you spend, right? So that's that's one example. There's another example. Actually, like I I, <laughs> I did this example for Pierre just to showcase it to him. This isn't actually what he uses. Just you know. Uh, so this is a mm, this is an example of a prompt to write email answers or any kind of answers, right? So in this case, basically the prompt says, I am Pierre, I'm CEO, right? And I want you to help me answer people, you know, questioning me, right? And also in the prompt, it, there's a request that he, like ChatGPT will always give you free options, right? So you can select which one you want. Like how you design a custom instruction is really up to you. So that's how I did it in this case. And also what I did is I added uh, some of Pierre's, let's say, chat from the past. So this is actually like uh, uh, one of the examples that of like simple sim, uh, text he would actually 
um, used in the past. So then what ChatGPT will do is he would actually try to replicate that style of writing. So whoever he's sending this to will have a um, hard time actually recognizing it's not Pierre. I only gave one example, but if you give him three or four examples, he'll be at more on point, right? So in this case, he's basically answering me that a hey, I'm talking too much and that I should be more on point, right? And he has three examples on, you know, how to do that. And then, of course, like from this point, you can elaborate, right? So you can ask him, hey, actually, this is a bit like stiff. I want you to add a, a quote, a philosopher quote to that, right? To make it more funny, maybe less... Uh, mm, less professional, right? Yeah, and you have a very nice quote from Pascal saying like, yeah, I would have written a shorter letter, but I did not have the time, right? So you can, like, this is day-to-day, -day, like, playing around with ChatGPT. So that's alpha prompts. One thing you can also do, uh, if you really want to um, have the same style over time, because what I recommend is having a few alpha prompts, which you use, and then you can copy paste it depending on exactly what your job is. Uh, but you can also like streamline completely. So you can use custom instructions. Basically, that's something very similar to alpha prompts. Uh, basically, you tell GPT who you are and what you want. So there is a, a dedicated tool for that activity. Yeah, these videos really don't want to work with me today, right? Uh, anyway, so the tool looks like this. It's uh, you you activate it from the options part, and basically he will ask you what would you like ChatGPT to know about you, right? And he will ask you how would you like ChatGPT to respond. So if you fill these in, he will apply this to every new chat you have in the future. All of them will be calibrated according to this. So you can say, for example, that you are like yeah, you're based in Singapore, right? You are a CQV uh, engineer, and your main purpose is supporting like uh, the production line of what's it, what's it, right? And yeah, and what you want from him is to actually give you examples from, let's say, ISP regulations or stuff like that. So this. This, if you want to use it in one way particular, and you don't really want to go sideways, then that will work. Oh yeah, the video started working. Oh, it's a bit late. But yeah, so then basically, this is the, um, the instruction I gave him. And then you can see that when I start a new chat, and yeah, I ask him who I am, so he will actually know that that information that I'm in Singapore, I have high IQ, etc. Right, which not doesn't necessarily mean it's true, but yeah, you can ask him to to call you my lord or whatever you want. Uh, okay, so that's alpha prompting. It's very useful and it can actually increase your productivity a lot. So I recommend using it. And yeah, let's go to the next part, which is direct use cases. So these are some of the use cases I thought which could be useful directly in our work environment. So I'll just jump in straight into like the URS versus vendor document comparisons. So this is something which I think comes up a lot. This is also one of probably the first use cases for industrialized assistance down the line. So basically, uh, very often we compare one document to another, right? Looking for answers, checking if the vendor actually has what is required of him. So. Of course, remember about confidentiality, you know, purge the data, clean the data, make sure there's no possibility of recognizing the, the data to the vendor or whoever it is, right? As long as, like, if it's public, it's public. But if it's not public, then make sure there's no private data there. So in this case, what I use is just ask your PDF plugin. It allows you to just drop your PDF, uh, sorry, not drop, not, not a PDF, but the uh, address to the PDF and analyze it. So in this case, what I did is I created a list of very generic uh, URS requirements for an autoclave. And I found online, uh, basically, a, mm, a leaflet of an autoclave. I, I don't even know too much about that autoclave. It's just an example one I found on Google. Mm. It's not really for this URS. It's it's generic, as I say, but it will have some of the answers that we require from the URS, right? So 
Now I am posting the US requirements to ChatGPT, of course, cleaned of private confidential data, right? So in, the, in this case, I'm asking him uh, that the autoclave must achieve a sterility assurance, right? Of level under 10 to six, right? And it, it should calculate the F0 for the sterilization and no pooled water should be inside the items post sterilization, right? So these are um, US requirements. And then uh, I will give him the address to this um, PDF I found online. Yeah, so this is just a generic autoclave from some Tutnawa vendor out there, which posted this uh, uh, publicly. So I will attach the address of this PDF. You can also do this on your own PDF. Of course, this is just an example where I'm using online PDFs, but you can drop your own using the data analysis tool. Or you can just post, drop your PDFs into Google, press share, and then you have the link. So you can use this plugin that way also. Uh, so I'm telling him that this is the PDF of the autoclave. Uh, I want him to check if these five parameters are fulfilled by that PDF, right? So then he starts processing. It takes, let's say, 30 seconds, right? And we have the answer. So in this case, all three questions, there is no answer in the PDF. So yeah, this is actually correct because I checked and the PDF doesn't have answers for those three questions, right? Uh, as I said, this is a very generic uh, autoclave description, but I know that he does have answers to these three questions, right? So the filter, the, mm, the temperature, mm, maintenance, the, mm, the temperature range, and the, the design of the doors, right? So these are three other questions, which usually pop up for autoclaves and let's see how he he manages that right and yeah here we are all three answers are correct right so he found the answer he told on what page is that answer and in some cases like he would even elaborate right you could actually ask him to give you more information from his own database but this is something you can check right so we we checked for the filter right yeah there's the information about the filter, right? On page five, right? Then we check the temperature range, right? Uh, on page eight, let's see, you know, like, is it is it actually like that? We go to page eight and yeah, we have the temperature ranges, which he collected correctly. And yeah, then we go forward, we check the doors, like basically he tells us that, yeah, the documentation proves and yeah, in the documentation we have the doors. So this is one example we could use right now really uh, if you have mm, if you can upload vendor documents and can purge URS to the most generic requests mm, so there's no possibility of it being linked to mm, a provider then you can do this right so that could save you a lot of time so then the next two examples I have are a bit more about coding. So for anyone out there who wants to code, uh, these models actually have allowed people um, to create quite good code or debug code, even though I never did it before. So how it works is basically if you have no knowledge about uh, coding, you can ask him to, you know, to give you some lessons, he would do that. Uh, because without completely no knowledge, then yeah, it may be hard. But if you have at least some knowledge about coding, uh, then it will actually provide the the support you need, right? So, um, yeah, I'll just fast forward because my time is slowly coming up. I created two examples of the code. One is uh, I took this article about the data lake and I dropped it into GPT and asked GPT to design a data lake. Of course, you, get, uh, you must remember, this is not top quality content. Uh, the better you add coding, the less you will rely on GPT giving you creative answers like this. And the more you will rely on GPT just doing a very specific task. So like experts will will forward the most basic tasks to GPT and even then they will double check it. But <clears throat> it's a good start. So if you want to, for example, in this case, build a SQL database, uh, you can take the information he gives you here and it's just the start, right? Double, triple, check it, you know, make sure it works. Mm, it's still a good 
you know, a good starting point. And at any point of time, you can ask him, why did you do this? You know, why, what is this function, right? And he will support you on every step of the way. So here I'm just, you know, asking him more and more questions. Like I'm telling him, okay, move the audit from the machine to like the central database, right? And then I ask him, okay, but once you do that, remove the old one, right? And I ask him some more and more and more, and we are slowly building up the solution. There may be mistakes here. As I say, don't take this as a source of truth, uh, but it can actually uh, help you create some simple coding, uh, which you would have thought is beyond your range. Uh, it's very good at coding the standard languages out there like SQL or Visual Basic, C++, you know. So then, um, yeah, I'm dropping uh, the code here. And what you would see is I actually broke it in a few places. Mm. So yeah, so I actually messed up with it. And I'm asking him like, okay, now fix this, right? So debugging is also a big thing. Mm. When you see code, uh, you can always drop it to ChatGPT and ask him to give you a summary of what that code does. Or if the code is not working, you can ask him, you know, what's the mistake? If you are, we are talking about sophisticated solutions, this will probably not work. Mm, this only works on a basic level. So if there are like typos or like obvious logical mistakes, he will tell you that. If you want to copy paste a whole big program in here, then he would definitely not manage. But yeah, in this case, he found the mistakes. Mm, he will actually later on, I will ask him to explain me what's going on here and he will he will basically do a pretty good job at that, right? So he's telling me what uh, what the transaction is about, you know, all the different functions going on here. So then another example I did is using PowerShell. This you, you can do on your Microsoft machine. I just ask him to create a script in PowerShell, which I can run. And it will take my folder downloads and take all the rubbish and basically put it into correct folders. So uh, it will create folders, which will be named according to the um, format of the file. And then it will move those files into those folders. So in the end, we will have only folders like PDF, like doc, like XLS, like uh, text, right? And yeah. So here you can see, I'm just, I'm not even checking this. I, I'm just copy pasting the code he gave me to PowerShell and we will see what happens. Yeah, there's a mistake wrong, right? Uh, but then what I do is, you know, we just copy this error, you know, just 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 post it to ChatGPT and ask him like, what the hell, why isn't it working, right? And he'll actually tell you. So in this case, uh, I didn't have enabled the policy, which allows me to run uh, PowerShell scripts on my machine. So yeah, I just do what he tells me, right? I change the policy, I run the script and hey, it's working. There are some mistakes here, but the script itself did the job, right? You can go into the mistakes, but that's, I will not elaborate that far. And we check the folders and hey, these are probably the mistakes on top, probably because it was open. And lower you can see all the new folders, RAR, you know, PS1, MP4, MP3, and they will be all full of the files which were in downloads. So this I created without any thought process. This was me just copy pasting from GPT, right? So then if you actually want to go fully into it, you can create your GPT on your own local machine. There's a guide here, but this is an expert level task. Uh, I would recommend it only if you know what you're doing, you are actually engaged into this because it, will, it is a long process, but in the end you can have your own model running in your own way. So whatever you want to do privately on your machine, it will support that. It will not be as good as GPT-4, but it will be yours. So yeah, so that's uh, some of the use cases I could see. And then we'll go to the advanced data analysis tool. So in this case, uh, actually, I will not go too deep into the subject because I haven't been using it so much lately. I know when it came out originally, as it was called Code Interpreter, it was one of the most powerful tools on the market. So it would actually create code and check that code. So it would mm, basically run reiterations on the code. So it was like self fixing, self thinking, and it it would it was actually quite amazing at the task it did. But right now it's been changed. The idea has been changed. Now it's more for data analysis. So you can play around with it. Uh, 
two things I've been doing is I've been cutting PDFs, so just dropping a PDF and telling him, hey, cut this into 10 pieces. I know everybody does that uh, in, in their own way. This is how I do it, so maybe that's useful for you. And another thing I've been doing is you can actually ask him to create charts. Uh, so in my case, I just dropped the mm, temperature change during the last 80 years on the whole Earth. So I found this nice spreadsheet, I think, on one of the mm, organizations out there which, which tried to you know promote this information. And yeah, you have all the countries and all the temperature ranges. So in this case, I will be analyzing Singapore. <clears throat> There's lots of data here, right? So I dropped this Excel into the tool and asked him to make a chart. So that's it. There are holes because there was no data in Excel, not because <clears throat> it made a mistake. So this is how you can use, then you can go forward and uh, what, do what I, for example, did is I said, okay, this is Singapore, I want to compare it to Greenland, right? Maybe, you know, maybe it's only Singapore which is heating up, you know, maybe in Greenland the temperature is, you know, stable and that would raise questions, right? So we do that and yeah, it takes him a moment and yeah, there we are, Greenland versus... Uh, Singapore. No, sorry, this is actually the medium of Singapore. Uh, if we move forward. Okay, so this is comparison of Singapore to Greenland. And yeah, actually, like it's rising there also. So it, this is the data analysis you can do. You can just drop um, any kind of data here, ask him to do it for you. You can also ask him to actually change it. So you can drop an Excel and tell him, uh, like, I don't know, for example, remove all the and uh, numbers which are under zero and shift all the cells up so there are no holes in the data, right? And he will be able to do that, right? So there are many operations on Excel you can do with him. If you are lazy and you don't want to open Excel and do it yourself, you can just drop it here and he'll do it for you. Although, as I say, there are mm, many questionable changes lately, so I cannot guarantee that it will work as you want it to work. But yeah, we will see how this grows down the line. I hope to actually elaborate on this during the newsletter. And yeah, that's that's basically it. I've just done a run through of the whole uh, whole thing. So yeah, in no division, we are uh, thinking about creating a tool based on what's called um, RAG. That's uh, reverse augmented generation, or sorry, retrieval augmented generation. So basically, what that does is it is an LLM like. GPT or like uh, Llama, but it's a lot more than that. So it will actually be a whole algorithm where it will actually search for the answers within our own documents. But yeah, that's a work in progress. Actually, there are many companies out there doing this. So one way or other, this will be something coming up in the future. And yeah, we'll see where that goes. Mm, hopefully, I will have a webinar about that in the future. So yeah, uh, so that's pretty much the content I wanted to show for this webinar. I hope this has gained your interest. What I do ideally want is to have like a collaborative space, as I mentioned in the beginning, because there is a lot of tools out there. Most of the tools I mentioned uh, probably have already better counterparts, uh, but there's no way of a single person to actually follow all the trends. Uh, so, I hope to actually collect the information into uh, one, in our case, a center of excellence, and then we can see where that goes, right? Because I feel like uh, using these tools really can help out a lot. So you can speed up your work and also like speed up any personal tasks you have, you know, so uh, you have more time to, to do what you actually like, right? Which is not necessarily comparing documents or, you know, sitting in Excel. Okay, so if you have ideas, um, there's the Q&A and the newsletter board here. Um, we will be dropping the link to the board. So any any of you want, if you want, you can access this board. You can check the videos, the information, the links, everything I talked about. And what I would really like is if you could drop your ideas. Uh, it can be anything as simple as, you know, I don't know, I am doing this or that in a repetitive manner, you know. I have a document which I open once per week and I compare it to another document or any kind of task which you think is in line with the kind of solutions we have here. You can just drop the idea. I'll try to bite into it or we can bite into it together 
And yeah, I hope we can find a solution, right? So then down the line, um, as I said, we create this wide range of solutions. So yeah, so the next ones I will show want to develop is the content creation in HR. So yeah, I will drop the, uh, the invite to the Teams group. So you guys can actually uh, go in and you know start playing around if you want to ask me anything. Uh, yeah, now's the time. I would love to uh, answer any of your questions. If you have an idea you think you know is worth sharing right now, then yeah, we can go at it. I can do like a live presentation. Okay, so I dropped the the link on the chat. You can also give me ideas within the chat if you have anything. So these are some of the ideas I came up with just like five minutes before the meeting, right? And uh, yeah, some generic ones like, will I ask my job and stuff like that. Hey, Dominic, I was just thinking right, maybe for some of the office uh, operations, mm -hmm. right? Like, do you think it will be something that you can maybe help automate it to be better? Maybe even in terms of like checking for everyone's leaves or like payroll, then they can maybe help save up our time right? in manually checking in for everyone. Oh yeah, sure. Like basically, if if we have any kind of data sheet, right? Uh, if we have any document which has that information. So for example, we are using times, right? I don't know exactly what's the metadata, the back database of times, but I'm pretty sure there is some kind of like sheet or SQL data connected to it, right? So uh, you can use that data to automate tasks. You don't even necessarily probably need to use AI for that, but you could. So basically, uh, yeah, this is something we could also include in uh, internal development we are hoping for because uh, basically once we have the LLM run, running on our own data, we can, like for example, create a folder where we will forward the information from times, right? So then we can create an automated question from Ein, let's say, right, every morning. Uh, okay, what's new, right? who is requesting uh, leave or like stuff like that. And he will actually query that document and tell her, okay, like uh, there's this thing you could take care of of that, right? So any kind of mm, data with, which is, let's say, uh, easy comprehensible for these models, well, we can work with that. And yeah, like if you give me a more detailed like explanation, like what exactly you want, maybe there's a tool out there ready. Because there's this website, like for example, uh, there's an AI for that, there's a website like that, and you can just mm, search for the AI tools out there. There's like thousands of them. Most of them I don't recommend using them because it's a bit of a dump, but there's actually a lot of also very useful tools there. So it's quite often the solution is not even about developing, it's just about finding it. Hey guys, perhaps I can introduce myself and uh, give a little bit of context. Mm, I'm Thomas. Mm, can you see me? Mm. Perhaps. Yeah. Hey, I wanted to. Um, I'm Tomasz from Aproco, and uh, we work together uh, with Node Aviation on this part that Dominic mentioned briefly, uh, which will um, be an assistant for knowledge, which would enable the whole tool to know a little bit more and be useful in replying to questions to many more documents than just several. It has 4,000 tokens, which is more or less five pages, while the Azure version via API, it can access 8,000 and right now also 32,000 tokens, which is roughly 49 pages of text. Mm, but this, um, And what it enables is to give him many more um, information on like this custom instructions so that it can know a little bit more about you and what your needs are to browse through the 
given documents on hand. Actually, I think, I don't know if it's me, but uh, Tomek, I think your connection is not uh, the best. So you are dropping out from sec to sec. Tomek, by oh. the way, like he introduced himself, but may, maybe I will just, he's the team helping us out with, uh, with the internal development. Yes. So let me know if it's going to get any better. My, I might switch off the camera. Yeah, yeah, the, okay. there, that can help. All right, so just to briefly sum it up, mm, the context is getting bigger. It depends on the computation, mm, computational power that we have, and it obviously costs more to run um, much more complex mm, context. And another thing is that we can use vector databases where we put thousands of pages of documents and quickly be able to extract more or less the topic that we ask about and then provide that into the context, which is getting bigger and bigger. And it will be able to respond to our questions from various sources, our sources, like an internal database that will actually be useful. And another thing is agents, but this is probably a topic um, for another presentation, which um, can reply to the answer regarding operations. I think we should think of this tool as an assistant in a way, because like we got Excel back in the days when we had just calculators and it was able to run so many calculations for us. So we wouldn't have to do it manually. And right now we can give him context in a way of those vector databases and specific queries or prompts like they are called. Mm, and later on, also connect them via agents, to, uh, connect those large language models via agents or in a way of agents to perform certain tasks. And this really will be like, hey, I'm talking to that person, connect them to my team's account. And that's it. And it will perform that action. Yep, the, 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 the future, basically, the prediction for the future is a proliferation of personal assistants, right? So right now we are using GPT-4, like I'm using GPT-4 daily. Actually, like I, I use it too much. My girlfriend is actually jealous. But yeah, so that's that's what we are, where we are now, right? Because GPT-4 has the best solution out there. Uh, but what GPT-4 is actually is a multiple of GPT-3. So there's like 20 or more GPT-3 talking together and saying, okay, this is the best answer, right? Add on to that more process power and you have GPT-4. It's not uh, magical in any way. It's just basically a very robust, very big solution. Mm. So the, the open source LLMs that we are working on actually are quite similar to GPT-3. So the capabilities are not magical for GPT-4. The technology is out there. We can actually use it for our own purposes, you know. And this is what what we are going at here. And the, the expectation is that actually the open source models will probably at some point outperform the closed source models which are run by Google or OpenAI because the open source, basically, there's tens or hundreds of thousands of people working on it. And there is lots of enthusiasts and really like geeky people working and developing these tools, whereas like OpenAI and Google is limited to to themselves, right? So in the future, most likely what we will see is a lot of custom assistance really tailored to singular needs. So you'll be using these open AI open source solutions and just adapting it to your use case, right? So this is what what Tomek is also talking about is we we want to build this within the division and see how it works. So yeah, we I hopefully I will have more to say about this later on once we actually develop the full product. Right now it's still in work in progress, but yeah, that's something to look forward to. So if anyone has any more questions, uh, sure, bring it on. If not, then yeah, my hour is up, so I don't really want to keep you uh, away from work.
Okay, I think we will just wrap it up there. If, as I say, you have the board here, drop your ideas. And it doesn't have to be today, it doesn't have to be tomorrow. Any ideas, if you drop here, I will actually answer them. And yeah, I'll be also in office tomorrow and yeah, next week and the week after, yeah, obviously. So you can just come up and we can just talk about this because I I would like to know what everybody in Navigation does, but I don't. So if you think that any of this works for you or you there's something we can come up with together, just come up and we will see what we can do, right? Okay, so... <laughs> Thank you, Dominic. Sure, we will let you know. Great. Okay, thanks for listening uh, to this pretty long webinar. And yeah, see you guys around and we'll see how things go.